Welcome to Car and Driver. We've gathered 20 of the newest and most significant electric vehicles you can currently buy. And that includes everything from the inexpensive city runabout like the Chevrolet Bolt to luxury and performance standouts like this Lucid Air or the Tesla Model S Plaid. We have not one, but three all electric pickup trucks. Now we've tested each one, including their performance measurements to their real world range and how quickly they can charge. We've measured every inch, including how much cargo they can hold and how easy it is to get in and out. We've also had our entire team drive them over the exact same roads back to back. Last year, we had no pickup trucks, and this year we have the Lightning, the Rivian, and the Hummer. We've only had two EV of the years, so this is the second one, and here we go. Our EV of the year is measured against four tenants. Value, driving enjoyment, fulfillment of purpose, and advancement of technology, and you can see the winner in another video. Here we're covering our findings and the results of those tests, so you can know what to expect from any EV you may be considering. Before we start, a reminder that this test is open to either new or significantly updated vehicles, and that some vehicles were simply unavailable during the time of this test. What kind of range should you expect? The answer is complicated because it depends on how far you drive, how much you're willing to pay, your local infrastructure, and whether you have a charging station at home. You really should. Even further, the range ratings you see advertised are, at best, a rough approximation of what a given EV might do, depending on your driving style, the temperature, and so on. Making it more challenging is that automakers can use different testing methodologies, which means some range ratings aren't comparable and the real world range sometimes differs substantially from the official figure. There are other differences too. Tesla, for example, undertakes the expensive and time consuming process to report a separate figure for each and every wheel and tire combination on its models, but others, such as Rivian, don't, and tires can have a substantial impact on range. We measure all EVs at a constant 75 miles an hour. We believe highway range is more important because not only do EVs get better range in slow congested cities, but you're more likely to find a charging station there than you are between towns in the middle of the country. And if you're going to be doing lots of miles in a single day, such as on a road trip, you'll likely be traveling at highway speeds. Here we have those real world range results in white and the EPA ratings in black, with dots furthest to the right representing the highest mileage. The Lucid Air Grand Touring is our new long range champ, traveling 410 miles on a single charge, or 79% of its 516 mile rating. That range result eclipses our previous record holder, the Model S Long Range, by nearly 100 miles. For comparison, the Model S Plaid also reached 80% of its rating with 280 miles of real world range. But more curious was how German manufacturers often neared or beat their ratings. The Mercedes AMG EQS, Porsche Taycan, and Audi e-tron we tested all exceeded the EPA figure, while the BMW iX and i4 weren't far off. Special mention also goes to the Genesis G80, and Ford Mustang Mach-E GT that were also within 90% of their EPA ratings. Even heavier trucks like the Hummer EV and Rivian R1T went further than expected. The Rivian in particular highlights the variability in range ratings. The R1T we tested on all-terrain tires in 2021 went 220 miles versus its 314 mile range. The R1T we had for this test rode on all season tires and its result improved to 280 miles versus the same range rating. Charging is a similarly murky topic as range, and manufacturers don't make it easier, claiming things like peak charge rate or how long it takes to charge a certain percentage or add miles per hour. To be clear, there is no standard measurement, and charging speed and time hinges on whatever you're plugging into actually working at its advertised rate. 
which as of the time of this recording remains a hurdle. We believe that what matters most is an EV's average charge rate and how long it takes to add real world miles. Our measurement is a 10 to 90% fill on the fastest equipment an EV can handle and how long it takes to add 100 real world highway miles from our range test. Note that for some vehicles, that meant Electrify America 350 kilowatt fast chargers, which often didn't work as promised, so some results are missing. Here are the full results. Vehicles in the upper right excel at both accepting high power electricity and quickly adding miles. The fast charging and efficient Lucid Air again takes top honors, needing just eight minutes for a 100 mile top off. But in the top cluster of EVs that can add 100 real world miles in under 15 minutes, the three that cost less than $100,000 are all from the Hyundai Kia Genesis conglomerate. The Ionic 5, EV6, and GV60 each have an 800 volt architecture that enables this charging speed. To get an idea of the advantages this technology brings, consider that the Ionic 5 has an average charge rate more than double that of Hyundai's previous generation effort, the Kona Electric. Here's another quirk of the EV fast charging. The time it takes to charge the Ionic 5 from 10 to 80% is only three minutes longer than the time to go from 80 to 90%. The Hummer EV had the second highest peak charge rate and a decent 98 kilowatt average, but its inefficiency and a battery pack that's more than 60% larger than the next means that it still took the longest to charge. And it also cost $81, which means that a fill up from zero to 100% could crest hundred bucks. Fast charging is way more expensive, roughly three times as much versus plugging in at home. Beyond thinking about range and charging, you should also consider what it's like to live with these EVs, as many have reimagined, often needlessly, many parts of how you interact with them, from door handles to shifters and so on. Consider the Model S Plaid. It has a yoke instead of a normal steering wheel, but its steering ratio hasn't been adjusted to make this setup work. When making a tight turn that requires hand over hand movements, many drivers grab for a wheel rim that wasn't there or accidentally triggered a touch sensitive switch on the steering wheel. Add in a touchscreen interface to shift from drive to reverse and the car seems intent on making three point turns more stressful than needed. The ever increasing size, reliance on, and number of touchscreens is another growing trend, especially in the Mercedes EQS where the displays appeared like a sea of fingerprints and dead skin and dust when the car is off, no matter how attractive the other materials may be. The interior of the BMW iX stood out for its unique design, highlighted by blue fabric on the dash. Most of us found it spacious, modern, and attractive. On the other hand, the iX was one of many EVs featuring glass that spans nearly the entire length of the roof and doesn't have a shade, which we generally dislike because this tends to transmit heat into the cabin, so your climate controls have to work harder to cool things down, which of course hurts efficiency and mileage. The effect was especially noticeable in the Lucid Air, whose five head windshield stretches over the front seats. Worse, the output of its air conditioning certainly felt designed in California like the rest of the car. Some reinventions were harmless bits of fun, like the Genesis GV60's shifter, which is hidden under a glass-like sphere that rotates over when you start the car. It also features a facial and fingerprint recognition system to unlock and start the car when you don't have a key. But the R1T impressed us most with its rethink of truck sizing, which falls somewhere between full size and pickup, and its useful features from its storage bay between the cabin bed to the onboard air compressor. This is useful stuff. On the flip side of all these new and different features, there are plenty of EVs that just feel like normal vehicles, which is something we're sure many people will appreciate. Not everyone wants to daily drive a spaceship. The BMW i4, Chevy Bolt, Ford F-150 Lightning, Genesis G80, and Volvo C40 not only cover a wide spectrum of price and usability, but they all felt like normal vehicles that didn't need to flaunt their EV-ness to the world. What's it like to tow with an EV? 
With three electric pickups with ratings from 7,500 to 10,000 pounds, we sought to find out. We hitched each with the same trailer, a 29-foot, 6,100-pound camper that a family might take on a vacation getaway. We then drove all three trucks on the same 85-degree summer day on the same flat highway loop at 70 miles an hour. We set the climate controls to 72 degrees and drove as many miles as we dared. Each of these trucks have massive power and torque that make it easy to move with the flow of traffic, and their heavy weights make them very stable. The bad news? In general, the towing range for each was nearly half of our observed freeway range. And ultimately, the experience is not realistic for that family getaway. The low battery warnings start at roughly 50 miles to empty, when the battery is still nearly half full. And even if you're okay with frequent and lengthy recharging stops, most highway adjacent stations don't have pull-through access. That means disconnecting a trailer every couple hours, and that's a non-starter for most. That all being said, we were surprised to see the Hummer with the overall advantage, considering its weight, size, and lower 7,500 pound rating. One hypothesis is that it punches such a big hole in the air that it's less affected by the blocky trailer. The Rivian, being the smallest of the three, would see the opposite effect. Each truck also handles towing a bit differently. Adaptive cruise control is available while towing in the Hummer and Lightning, but not the hands-free Super Cruise or Blue Cruise. Meanwhile, Rivian disables adaptive cruise while towing. On the other hand, the Rivian's higher level of regenerative braking is helpful in slowing a trailer, while the Lightning disables its one-pedal drive mode. All three have integrated trailer brake controllers, but none are available with larger towing mirrors, which hinders visibility. Driving these EVs back to back over the same roads revealed a few standouts in the group. Many found the BMW iX and i4 pleasing and enjoyable. Some even likened the i4 to an all-electric M3, but with a better ride. The Audi e-tron GT was a clear favorite, with a sweet balance between its handling and ride that won tons of praise. Which shouldn't be surprising considering it shares its underpinnings with the Porsche Taycan. The taller and heavier Cross Turismo Taycan variant we had this year lacked a bit of the sharpness, but remained as fun as you would hope. Oddly, neither the e-tron nor the Taycan embrace aggressive one-pedal regenerative braking as much as they should. It really feels like a massive oversight. While most other EVs offer some form of one-pedal driving, we preferred the Hyundai Kia Genesis method of adjusting through paddles behind the steering wheel that made it easy to toggle through the varying levels from none to one-pedal driving. The comically sized and heavy Hummer EV drew the mixed responses you might expect from a truck that pairs 35-inch tires with T-tops. This massive vehicle was remarkably nimble at a crawl thanks to its rear wheel steering. Though at speed, some found it like you were behind the wheel of one of those fire trucks that has a separate driver from the rear end. In our performance tests, the Model S Plaid was as quick as ever, reaching 60 miles an hour in 2.1 seconds and the quarter in 9.4 seconds at 151 miles an hour. And, as of the time of this test, it remains unable to reach the 200 mile an hour top speed advertised by Tesla. Lucid supplies the other mega quick sedan with its air. We've previously tested the 1,111 horsepower Dream Edition, but here we had the Grand Touring. Even with a mere 819 horsepower, its 10.7 second quarter mile time was the second quickest. Its 173 mile an hour top speed is higher than what we've been able to get with any Tesla, and it's the highest top speed of any EV we've tested. Acceleration testing reveals how car makers can gain power figures. Some rate their power on a continuous basis, others only give you the power briefly. Consider the Mercedes AMG EQS, which claims 751 horsepower and 752 pound-feet of torque. Its 3 second 60 mile an hour acceleration ties the Lucid, but its pace falls off the longer you stand on the go pedal. The EQS's 11.4 second quarter mile time is only half a second better than the heavier, larger, and less aerodynamic Rivian R1T. 
It's a similar story with the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT, which delivers quick acceleration briefly, but falls off the longer you stand on it. To be sure, both are quick during real-world acceleration, like up a freeway on-ramp or during a merger, but we think you should expect more when you're buying a car with a performance brand as part of its name. While some vehicles fell short of expectations, others over-delivered. The Genesis GV60, Hyundai Ioniq 5, and Kia EV6 all share similar underpinnings and noteworthy performance. You can disable the stability control and traction control in each of them, which was a delight to our test team and the inner 10-year-old in all of us. The Genesis GV60 in particular didn't merely smoke its front tires on the way to a 3.7 second 60 mile an hour run, it also topped out at 151 miles an hour, or one mile an hour higher than the Audi e-tron GT. It's amusing to imagine making that pass on the Autobahn. We also have to highlight the Hummer EV, which was quick as promised, netting an 11.9 second quarter mile time in spite of its 9,600 pound curb weight. It almost feels like it's doing a wheelie when you launch it in its WTF mode. That weight meant a long 211 foot stop from 70 mile an hour and heavy brake fade after repeated runs. We hope you found this EV roundup enjoyable and informative. Be sure to read our EV of the Year articles for even more information, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next year. You, uh, you like the summer? This thing's awesome. <laughs>